Hello and welcome to my knitting podcast. My name is Irma and you can find me on YouTube, Ravelry and Instagram as Wolwerkjes. Welcome to the space on the internet where I talk about all the things I make, mostly knitting. And I have a few things to show you this week. So just let's get started. The first thing is something I'm wearing. I always start with the thing I'm wearing because otherwise I will forget. <laughs> so I will start with the thing I'm wearing and I'm wearing a dress. And let me see if I can stand up without knocking everything over. Um, I have made this dress and I don't know how well you can see this. Um, what it isn't a very special shape maybe, but what makes this special is that I have hand woven the fabric. So it's not only sewn by me, but it is also woven by me. And the pattern I made out of a dress I already had. So a lot of things I did myself. So this um, is a close up of the dress I am wearing in this video. As I said, it is uh, hand woven. Uh, which also is visible in some places because it's not uh, always um, the same tension but that's fine it's the first thing i've woven so i can't be bothered with that uh, i will get better um, i used a lining for the top part i didn't really nicely finish all the edges because i didn't want to cut into the fabric after I cut it out and zigzagged it around because I was afraid it would fray so that's why it's maybe not the neatest inside but also not the worst I used a lining so the top part won't be see-through and yeah I'm very happy with it I have a visible zipper at the side which is not really long but it gives me enough room to put it on over my head um, and zip it up. I can't put it on like stepping into it. It's too short for that. The skirt is gathered and um, that's always um, something um, that needs attention, especially with a fabric so loosely woven as this. So I didn't do it on the machine, I did it by hand, the gathering, and I sewn it together um, with the machine, but I did the gathering by hand, and I hand hemmed it. So it's just a double folded hem, but I did it, I secured it by hand, so it's almost not visible from the right side of the fabric. And um, yeah, I did it because there's so much move in this. I was afraid that if I put it under the machine, it would stretch and give a really, um, how you say it, not clean finished look. And it just took me an ev evening to, di to do that. And I also did it at the top. I did just a single folded hem over here because I didn't have that much seam allowance over here. So I was afraid I had um, not enough fabric to make it a nice double hem. So I just did fold it once, but no one will see that when I'm wearing it. So I'm fine with that. So I used some of this to make these straps. I had it lying around in black and it's all fine. So yeah. Those are the details of this dress. So let's continue to the next thing I have been working on. And I have to be honest, I only worked on one knitting project this week, which is not a bad thing. I think it's really, really nice to have one go-to project sometimes. I just go back and forth and doing all the things together and being monogamous. So that's just... The way I work um, but now I've been quite monogamous and it is my pie shawl and I know it won't be very 
easy to show it like this because you can only see just like this <laughs> so what i will try to do is take some close-ups again uh, so you can see it a little bit better so this is the shawl a little bit more visible for you it is a pie shawl so it's worked in circles and um, i started with the green in the center over here and it's going getting bigger and bigger with every few rounds and i have it on quite a smaller needle than the circumference of the shawl so it knits easier but it's really hard to show so that's why i think this is a better way to show you in the center you see the circles pretty well there's no lace there just the increases of um, after each amount of rows i do it with yarn over so you get this eyelets and then it starts going into the lace patterns there are different lace patterns over here you see this leather i think i misread the lace pattern over there i don't really mind i think it will be nice when the um, shawl is complete it will fan out a bit and it's fine but it happened because I did two decreases next to each other and they're facing each other. So one is left bending, the other is right bending. And that's how you get this letter. And I must have read, misread the pattern, but that's fine. I don't mind and I think it will be okay. And nobody knows that it shouldn't be there. So that's fine. And then the section I'm working on now, you see the sections get larger every time. I'm almost done with this lace uh, bit and you see that the color repeat starts uh, being closer on each other because the stitches double after each lace repeat so i have 566 stitches now and after a few rounds rows i will go to over a thousand stitches so there's a lot of knitting over there um, i don't think i have enough in this skein of yarn to finish it completely you can see how big this already is and it looks like there is a lot more green than there is blues but that's because of the stitch amount increasing so fast and yeah i do have two skeins so once i am done with this one and i worked up all the blues i can attach the blue from the new skein to the old one so i don't have a problem with disrupting uh, the color change but we will see how that works out the rows are really really long there are like i should have known exactly because it's a pie shawl and it doubles the stitches every so often but I don't know by heart. Uh, when I have to guess, it's like 566 stitches or something. Somewhere around that range. More than 500 stitches for each round. Which is a lot. So, <laughs> although I've done a lot of work on this. Um, it doesn't show that much progress because of the huge amount of stitches. And I'm looking forward to the next um increase row which i'm all almost upon uh, just one and a half more repeat of this lace and then i will go to over a thousand <laughs> stitches and i'm looking forward to that row because it marks the end of a section but my gosh more than a thousand stitches in one row <laughs> that's really a lot so it will be take it will take me even more time to finish a row um, I think it's only the border lace at that point. I'm not sure. I think so. So it's like marking the beginning of the end. So it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, thousand stitches. Why am I doing this? <laughs> no, I really enjoy it. And I like the thing I'm, I like about um, knitting garments in the round and knitting this pie shell in the round is that you. I have a beginning of row stitch marker just because I really like to know where my beginning of row is but just it just goes on and on and on and on and it's a really smooth motion so that's really really nice so another thing I've been working on is crochet I know <laughs> I started out as a crocheter a long time ago 
but I haven't done it in ages and most of the times it hurts my hands a little bit so probably because I do it maybe a little bit too tight but yeah uh, I have this pr I don't have this problem at the moment so that's really nice but I started crocheting and I started crocheting because my son asked for a Olaf toy the Olaf from Frozen and I said okay I will make that for you so I bought a pattern I will link the pattern or I put it a, I don't know yeah. you will see maybe I link it maybe it's just down here on the screen but um, I think from all the pattern and it's been quite a while ago since I bought this pattern um, but at that time I thought this was the one looking the most like the actual figure in the movie so that's why I chose it um, the descriptions are I write I haven't found a mistake yet and I think there are no mistakes in there but what I miss in this pattern is the amount of yarn you need for from each color to make it and for most of the things it's just one skein because it's just his nose in orange or just the arms and the hair in a brownish tone so that's the when one skein is more than enough in those situations but I guess they they only state the colors and the amount of meterage in each each skein and I assumed that I just would need one skein of the white color to make the body and the head and the feet and the eyes but it turns out I don't have enough so I bought 100 grams and I think I need 50 grams more so that's a bummer but yeah maybe I misread the pattern but I couldn't really find the amount of yarn you needed so that's something I have to note there if you want to make it and another thing I want to note there is that the they use different thicknesses of yarns for different sections and I couldn't find the exact yarn they used only the amount of meterage for a certain amount of grams which is fine only I found it hard to find the exact same thing so I guessed a bit and I think it's fine what I chose but sometimes it's just nice to know what the designer used so you can compare it to that brand and now I really had to go <laughs> with my own feelings so it's fine and it's working out really nice but yeah that was the thing I will show you the parts so uh, these are the pat pattern pieces I have already oh, pattern pieces yeah pieces I've already made of uh, this stuffed doll I'm going to make for my child and it it's going to be Olaf from Frozen, so you have his belly or bottom, I think it's his bottom, and his feet, and then you have the middle part of his body, and this is going to be his head, and as you can see, um, I used all the yarn I have and it isn't finished yet, so I need one more skein of the white because the only thing I made this out of two skeins and the only thing missing is the bottom part of his head and a little uh, shapes for his eyes so I have enough with one ball I hope because I only ordered one extra we will see but yeah he is taking shape and it's really fun to see uh, it will get stuffed it will get sewn together and I'm all my, all, always amazed with how fast crochet is going because this is only 
two evenings and you almost have the complete shape of course the hairs and the um, arms and stuff will take uh, it's more fiddly so it will take a little bit more time but yeah it's really going very fast and I hope I can finish this soon for him so yeah those are the things I finished from Olaf for now and I think it will go quite fast although the arms and hands will be a little bit fiddly I think um, the biggest parts are done and I just have to stuff it and fill it and wait for a little bit more yarn so I can finish this head up because this is a little bit sad isn't it <laughs> just half a head yeah so that's the other thing I have been working on and I have to tell you that's it what I have been working on that's not the only things I have to show you though because I did some acquisitions over the past two months not that much yeah it's quite some to show you can see it peeking on the side of me over here uh, it's not a lot um, but it is quite some and I will just show you so the first thing I want to show you is this this is yarn from Bishes and Bushes Lippity Lambswool I will show you the label it's the medium grey and it is Scottish lamb's wool and I really really don't know which breed and I I don't I like it I don't mind because I well I was at Cross and Woods it's a shop here in the Netherlands it's in The Hague and I was there uh, I think a month ago or something and I was able to touch it when I bought it so then I don't really mind that I don't know the fiber content exactly but especially when I order online sometimes you know it's not always right but sometimes you know that a certain breed gives a certain yarn and it's nice to know the breed to be able to guess a little bit about the texture and the feel of the yarn but I could feel this so it's no problem and it's a uh, hundred percent lamb's wool so there's no alpaca or anything like that in here it's just wool from a sheep <laughs> and um, from lamb so it's really soft um, it's non superwash and I am very happy that I have this because I have been thinking about making the loose pattern by Andrea Murray and I was aiming to spin myself the right amount of yarn but I didn't have enough and I spun it a little bit too thick so and I couldn't get it out of my head so I was very happy that I was at Cross and Woods and could buy myself the right amount of yarn in a color I think I can wear every day so yeah now I have to cast it on and that will happen quite soon but mm, I first want to finish a few things and I think I need to finish my flex light if you don't know because this is the first time you're watching um, I'm working on a flex light sweater for I think since since the beginning of January and I have not been working on that a lot lately and I think I need to finish that before I start this because it's um, if I don't I think it will get a pendant or yeah I think that would be a shame because I'm very looking forward to using that sweater so yeah I'm very happy with this purchase and 
uh, I haven't worked with this yarn before, so I'm looking forward to um, how it's working out. And when I was at Cross and Woods, I also bought a Finnish um, lace weight yarn. Okay, I haven't looked at this label to pronounce the name yet so i will try orin <laughs> kokehera something like that so as you can see everything i had lying around over here is gone i finished recording but my i'm recording on my photo camera at the moment because my really really old video camera was just not giving me the quality i i wanted anymore and i will just need to replace it maybe one day but um, i do have a video camera that can a photo camera that can record video in quite a okay quality quality i use it for the more close-up videos i have um, of my projects it's working fine. The only issue is it only records 15 minutes and I forgot about that because I haven't used it for filming in quite a while for more than 15 minutes. When you stay under you don't notice. So I thought I was finished with the recording of this part. So the this angle which has shifted a little bit now because I bumped into my tripod when <laughs> reaching for my camera and all stuff and I thought I was done so it didn't mind but it only records 50 minutes but yeah talking about everything twice it's not that fun so I was talking about this Finnish lace weight yarn which I'm not going for to pronounce again um, it has more than 600 meters for a 50 gram gram skein or cake or whatever you want to call it it's the same uh, thing you see with a uh, holster yarn and stuff that they come in the, those cute uh, skeins or cakes I have to say um, Let's see if I can show you how thin this yarn is really um, Even if I double it Let's see if I can show you that as well um, I think it's still not as thick as a sock yarn as a fingering weight yarn it's really really thin as I said 600 meters for 50 grams um, 50 grams of sock weight has 200 200 meters something something around that so this has three times the meterage you get in a normal sock yarn and this is a lace weight and lace weight goes from like 800 meters for 100 grams to even finer and this is finer than that so yeah i'm really looking forward to working with this what i'm going to make and i don't know how the pattern is called i will put it on the screen for you um, it's a pattern by stephen west and it's a pattern you can use in different ways so you can wear it as a long vest like thing so it has no sleeves and you can wear it over something else uh, it's really see-through uh, you can also wear it as a kind of scarf or something in between those or something that goes over your head if, it, if you need to cover your head for some reason. So it's very, very versatile and I'm really looking forward to um, making that and choosing this yarn. So let me see. I also bought, of course, the yarns for my um, for the project I'm working on, which is the Olaf doll or stuffed animal i don't know the english term really that well um i know in holland we have like the word the word knuffel which is everything soft and fluffy you can cuddle with and it can be an animal or a person or a fantasy thing it's all all one you can put them all under one word which is knuffel and knuffelen is um, hugging, like cuddling. So it's a really easy word for me to use. And I don't really know how to translate it in English. I know you have stuffed animal. But in my ears that sounds like it has to be an animal. But maybe I should say stuffed toy. 
but a toy is sometimes a stuffed figure is only for cuddling and not really for playing so yeah it annoys me a bit that I don't have a really good English term for that and when you know what I mean please help me because yeah it would be nice to have the same kind of word in English so I'm distracted let's see the white is all in use <laughs> so I can take a little piece of it so you can see so I had the white and the black which are the same thickness um, I used all the white I ordered more white um, the black I haven't touched yet and the brand I used is yarn and colors and this is their epic yarn which is a thicker crochet yarn than uh, like the standard you can find over here and why I choose yarn in colors is because they have a lot of colors and a lot of different thicknesses of the same type of yarn. So they have a lot of cotton yarns and from the same kind of quality but in different thicknesses. So this is a 50 gram skein with 75 meters and this is a 50 gram skein with 170 meters. Um, this has, I think, eight, it's not on the label, but I was counting just now, and I think they have eight, six or eight plies, and I think this only has two or three, maybe four, four, maybe, but way less, but it's the same cotton, so that really makes the total effect really nice, so you can choose the same quality, but in different weights, in different um, type of threads so thicker thinner fluffy they have really a lot of colors and a lot of types so that's really nice so I that's why I I chose this yarn uh, Volplein is selling this and I always am very happy with their service so that's really nice they have a inspiration center they call it I'm not sponsored by the way just uh, ordering there once in a while um, yeah, and uh, you can see the yarns there and touch the yarns there and it's a really nice place but their online store is also very very nice. I have those three colors for the details. So the brown is for the arms and his the twigs on his head. <laughs> The orange is for his nose, of course, and the gray is for the inside of his mouth. And when I ordered this stuff for this particular toy, you can cuddle it. <laughs> um, I also bought some sock yarns because I have this very nice book. I got it for for a little. I got it for my birthday in May, back in May. And I haven't knit out of it because I think most patterns in here are working out the best in a solid color. And although um, I can always dye my own solid colors, sometimes it's nice to just buy some. And I bought some solid colors to make socks out of this book. So I bought four colors out of... Um, yeah four colors and it is a superwash um, sock yarn with 75% wool and 25% nylon and it is um, yeah I really like the colors they have it's a long yarn gia wool and um, the only thing I overlooked is that they're 50 grand and I wanted to make like a little bit longer socks and pattern socks can take up a little bit more yarn than normal so if I do a vanilla sock for myself I can get a pair out of 50 grams but I usually don't make really long legs on my socks so I think I don't have enough but we will see it's a commercial yarn I can always buy more but yeah, so that's 
also something I bought to knit the socks out of this very nice book. And what's really nice with these yarns is that in on the inside of each ball they have a little bit of thread matching the yarn you have and it um, you can use it to reinforce your heels and toes so you take those two together and you get a more sturdy toe and heel if you want to and I think I'm going to do that it's a small effort with a lot of benefits so that's really really nice um, don't throw it away if you use it if you have a hole in your sock you can darn your hole with this thread as well if you don't use it Please don't throw it away, but give it to someone who will use it because it's really, really nice to have those threads. So, and I bought one more skein of sock yarn. Um, I wanted to try a cotton sock yarn. I once had a cotton sock yarn. I still have it in my stash. Um, I think it's the first thing I tried to knit that wasn't a square. <laughs> And my brother and I were just like, oh, let's knit socks. It will be fine. It will be easy. I didn't really research a lot about sock knitting. And I really wanted to do a very nice pattern at first try. And it got languished. And then I lost the pattern. And I knit other socks out of it. But yeah, it doesn't really bring up really great experiences with sock knitting. Because I really like knitting socks. And it's not because of that first try. So... Uh, I really wanted to start uh, trying a cotton sock yarn again because it's been over 25 degrees for quite some time now and I don't really feel like wearing woolen socks now. So I tried this yarn, it's a Lana Glossa yarn, they call it Maiden White. And it's not 100% cotton because cotton has a really short staple length and if you ever try... Um, read things about staple length and fibers and stuff you know that a short staple length um, is easier to wear out so if you twist it a lot it gets sturdier but like cotton has really short staples and it won't last a day if you knit your socks out of pure cotton so it needs something to make it stronger and they used a polyester type of fiber for this one um, it's basically a plastic yarn. I know people don't like the term plastic for yarns, but basically it's a man-made fiber out of oil, which makes it a plastic, which isn't a bad thing because this yarn really needs it. Like there are sock yarns without synthetic fibers in there, which can be very durable. But if you go for cotton or for a merino sock yarn, you need something to make it sturdier. Like I have two, let's see if I can. So as I said, there are sock yarns that are able to be sock yarns without a synthetic fiber in there. And I dye on two of those. This is a Cordial base with a really high twist. I haven't yet walked holes in my Corridial socks. Um, I felt it a pair by accident, but that's a different story. Um, it has a really high twist and a Corridial sheep has a long staple length fiber. So, um, and when you twist those long staples very tightly around each other, you will get a sturdy yarn, which will not give you holes in your socks that fast of course every sock can get holes and it depends on the use i'm not very easy on my socks and i haven't yet um, walked holes in those um, and another solution is blending fibers and this is a blend of wool and silk and rami and both silk and rami also have long staple lengths which gives the wool a little bit more sturdiness. I have to say this is a really soft yarn and I have one pair of socks that I did walk holes in it. I have to say nowadays I knit my socks on a tighter gauge, so more stitches to an inch or to a centimeter, which also helps preventing holes in your socks. But um, yeah, I did, I did walk 
holes in one of my pairs, just one. And it was one of the first pairs I knit. And I think that's three or four years ago. So that's quite fine. Yeah, so um, yeah, they do exist, but we're, we're getting distracted. So that's why in a cotton yarn for socks, you need a synthetic fiber. So it has 87% of cotton and 13% of polyester. You don't know which polyester. There are lots of different polyesters, but at least they say there is polyester in there. And I'm very, very curious in how this knits up. Um, unlike normal cotton yarns, it has quite some stretch, which makes me very interested in how this will knit up. And I'm also going to knit something out of the 42 weeks of socks. I think this speckle is like subtle enough to make it work with those intricate patterns. So we will see how that works out. And I'm very happy to find a cotton sock yarn and I'm very curious in how it's going to knit up. So that's everything I bought and I think also everything I have to talk about for this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in two weeks. Mm -hmm.